Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about lead software developers. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, how does one become the lead software developer in your, in, in your company with so much fierce competition? Well, I, I'm, is, I, I'm not sure. Am, am I just really, really fond of myself or is there a, like a hidden compliment in there somewhere? How do you become the lead software developer in your company if there's such fierce competition? Unless you're talking about my other coworkers, I'm guessing that you just complimented me. Thank you. I needed that. So, if I'm going to take this question and make it maybe a little bit more broader than just my specific company and apply it to something that might actually be applicable to other people as well, I'll give you uh, what I think is going to is is gonna make. I mean, if you want my, if you want a shot at being my boss, I think that this is the thing that you should be doing. So, the first and foremost thing that you should know about getting ahead in an IT company, in any product company at the very least, it doesn't always, it doesn't have to be a product company. This is fairly applicable in practically any type of IT company. Is that the only thing that matters? is results to and that th this is a little bit subjective as well not at all expenses you have to have good results st sustainable stable results you have to consistently be the person that people can and people know that if i involve this individual even if it's like it doesn't have to be coding it can be decisions like your opinion or your insight is always practically leading to better things for the company that's when you get to be my boss. I promise you, you're going to be my boss. I will make you my boss if you can do that for me and my coworkers. And this is surprisingly difficult. It's very easy to find a lot of developers who have a lot of ideas, but not all of them turn out all that well. I like to say that the cost that every single company pays for not having experienced senior, uh, senior developers who have the ability to lead is measured in legacy code. And the reason why I say that it's measured in legacy code is because that is what you that is the cost of educating mid-level and junior developers to become a senior developers who can make good decisions because you need a, that's that's the process we all go through how do you get experienced and how do you know how to make good decisions and actually weigh in on really important discussions well you have to fuck up you have to practice you and you need to practice in a real live environment that reflects the sort of environment where you need to make decisions in and if th this is the thing that all the companies are afraid of usually that they are going to hire a bunch of junior or mid levels and they are going to make a lot of horrendous bad code and then they're going to fuck off to another company and now they have they're more experienced and maybe in the next company they're not going to fuck up as bad but you're still left with the training code as i like to call it their practice code and you need to maintain it because it's the thing that is like you paid them to make it and it's not really good but you can't really force them to do anything about it and this is the thing that if you are a if you can master this you will become like if you're not a city if you're gonna be a CTO you're gonna have to be, have a fair bit of uh, charisma as well and play office politics a lot better than the average person but should, just with this one trick or just this one ability you will be able to get to a management type of level or become the lead software developer in no time well it still requires experience because a junior developer will never be able to do this because you simply don't know enough to be able to make these decisions uh, and that's why I try to argue for that every single software developer needs to have the mindset of continuous growth because even if you even if you get really good if you want to continue progressing you will might you might find that at some point it's really like your your next career step isn't really tied into how well you can write software because you've already peaked in how well you write software and nobody really uh, like you're not going to be able to move up even further until you get to a point where your decision making 
uh, ability and your opinion on topics and so forth <coughs> is at the, at the next level. So that's where the social soft skills and the social skills come in uh, in terms of career progress. Because I can promise you guys, the people that like that my managers and the people who actually make all the decisions that basically tell me exactly what, uh, tell me what I need to do and this has been true for every company well n almost every company they are not paid to just write the code sometimes they're not even paid to code but they have been coding for years and they've been working in the industry for long enough so that they can make these the sorts of decisions and their input is usually that's what they they're paid for they're paid because they know how to do things and how to tell other people what they need to do in order to get those results and that is the best way for you if honestly if you were to follow i i think that just if we're going to go with a really rough like just take it for what, it, for what it is now. A really rough uh, development plan for you is to start out as a junior de software developer, learn the tools of the trade, learn how all of the normal stuff works for all of us. That doesn't matter if it's your company or some other company. This is practically how we all work. Know what's important to stakeholders. Know how, like how what's important to your different developers. And then when you get to a point where you feel you can kind of just do the normal daily grind, start looking into getting yourself involved in in the business world, like start have a talk with what's important to your stakeholders. What sort of projects can you invest in? What areas can you further your understanding of so that when people at the technical level wants to know what they should do, you can actually help them. You can guide them not only from the technical perspective, but you can guide them from the business perspective. And that is the thing that is going to give the best results. Because if you want to really get ahead and get far in any company, you need to understand that it's uh, it's like having two legs if you have just the technical leg you're you're going to be crippled and if you just have the business leg you're also going to be crippled if you have both of these legs you're going to be able to run the whole race that is a very rough analogy but it's i think the best strategy that you should keep with you in order to become my boss or practically all of you i mean practically a boss in any company or be a tech lead or something like that so what i want you to take away from this is that if you want to be the lead software developer in my team and so forth, you of or in my company or practically any company, you're gonna first and foremost need to have fairly strong technical skills, but you also need to understand that your value is not just about how good you are at the coding. It is coming from your ability to solve meaningful problems that are important to the company. And in order for you to know what's important to the company, you need to understand what's important to the engineers, but also what's important to the sales representatives and like the CEO and like all the other people around in the company, because it's a team effort. It's not just engineers doing their thing and that's the whole story. It's a, run, a range of different people. And if you can understand what's going to be the best investments for all of these people, they will hear you out. If they understand, they feel like you really hear them and you can really come up with good solutions and good insights into different discussions, you will be surprised at how quickly they will come for, to you for everything. They will come for you to you to verify pitches for new customers or get like sometimes guys I have been a so like an emotional care bear. I've just had people come up to me and say Frederick, can you or your coworker, like we're the senior devs on my specific team, can you please just sit in on this meeting? Because I I just feel more comfortable if you're in there. That is so. That's you. Like if you can get to that point, that's you moving in in the direction of becoming my boss or practically anybody's boss. Have a great day.